Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to another Heart of the Swarm beta cast. Today I have got a ladder match, let me introduce the two players, it's gonna be a PvZ. So in the top right, as the blue Protoss, it is Kyo and his opponent in the lower left is the red Zerg, it is Sen. So two really good players, I know Kyo's in Grandmasters, I believe when I loaded this video up, or the replay up rather, that I saw Sen was also in GM. but He's quite a well-known StarCraft player anyway, so really thinking this should be quite an evenly matched game and should be a pretty fun one to watch as well. So I pretty much dedicated the last week on my channel to Heart of the Swarm because obviously with things like ESA UK Masters going on and just the general hype that's happening everywhere with Heart of the Swarm and a couple of other top secret projects I've got going on, I'm putting a lot of time into the expansion just to really get the ins and outs of it get to know different timings, different strategies, different play styles we're seeing people utilize. And dare I say it, I can't help but feel that I'm slowly getting to grips with what we should be expecting throughout the different matchups. One thing I would say though is Zerg is probably, even though I main Zerg through all of Wings of Liberty, in Heart of the Swarm, because I've been playing as random, it's actually the race which I'm least worked out. I would say. There's still too many different routes you can go for. I'm pretty certain that overall, especially against Protoss, Roach Hydra is likely the best option at the moment. It's really quite solid, but it's what you transition to out of that. Uh, some players seem to be liking to go for Swarm Hosts, and there's definitely a lot of merit there, just that once you get up to the 10 plus Swarm Host number, you can really overpower pretty much anything a Protoss can throw at you. And then, if you add in Corruptors as well, it becomes near death ballish but in terms of the viper route i think that's quite strong as well especially if the protoss doesn't go for too much air if they go for the more traditional colossi mix then you can really get a lot done with vipers so we'll wait to see what sen does of course i'm really interested in that kyo for the meantime Really the only difference to early game Protoss against Zerg is that you do have a very good option of going for a one gate expand with a mothership core because the mothership core and a couple of gateway units, usually a stalker and a zealot, are actually super good against Zerg and really throw a lot of, well, really good Zerg players off their tracks. So maybe it's something that we'll see come in more, but for the moment Kyo just favouring the forge fast expansion, getting the cannon down now. Might see a Stargate opening, it all depends on this gas timing and how many gas he gets out. Daybreak, of course, is a good map to go for any kind of airplay on, just because you've got some dead space here. It's not overpowered, but it's definitely feasible just with these dead spaces. Um, of course, you've got a little area you can get trapped in, which is the only thing you can sometimes need to look out for. So, what we're seeing now is the drone just checking behind the mineral line for any kind of pylons. The Zergling's coming over there as well now. The third base coming down at a very nice 4 minutes 10, so everything that we're seeing for the time being at least is very reminiscent of Wings of Liberty just as we all should be very comfortable with, very used to and really not getting too freaked out and I think that's the important thing for anyone who's transitioning from Wings of Liberty over to Heart of the Swarm. The number one thing I'd say is have fun for I'm still in the stage of just having fun and just trying to play random builds and I was watching TLO stream earlier actually when just before I recorded this so obviously not the down release and he was going for some compositions consisting entirely of Tempest and Templar just because they weren't that good but it's that sort of tryout stage that I think everyone should really get going with give it a go give it a try maybe it'll work maybe it'll be fun who knows if it doesn't work guess what it's, it's the beta it's not something that you have to worry too much about save the hardcore timings and everything like that for after release when the ladders remotely matter but for the most part, this game is still just going macro, 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 macro. We've got Warpgate Tech coming out. We don't have the plus one weapons or armor yet. The third and fourth gas also going down, which is just really showing that it's probably going to be quite a tech-heavy play. Just waiting to see whether this plus one gets started. What else is going to get chucked down? Of course, the gas is really starting to bang. Um, bank up now. Stargate is on its way. That's what I was kind of looking for because Kyo seems to really enjoy going for the Stargate style. 
Stargate. So whether it's just pure Stargate commitment, or whether it's just going to be some Stargate harassment, be that Oracles, be that Phoenix, into a star where he could actually quite likes to get out quite a few void rays and then tech into Colossi. We'll wait to see. But for Sen, I had this is the first game of his I've actually cast on Heart of the Swarm, so I'm not entirely sure what he'll be going for. But he's getting the four gas up just after the 50 supply mark. So that's really when you get all four. Otherwise, you've got to get it a bit earlier down because you need to get two at around the 45 supply rather than four at 50 plus just to get in a good spot. Now, this stalker is going to be able to force back this overlord. Very unlikely to get the scout. Or it, you know, it's not going to. I don't think going the wrong way for it at the moment. So with that going down, will not see the Stargate. Just sees the three gateways are on their way. So that still leaves the option open that actually, what is coming down? If we look at the vision, no Stargate spotted. But the concern is always going to be, was it? a robotic facility is it going to be an immortal sentry all in which would look very similar to this the one key bit of information that Sen really needs to see is whether that forge is researching and he doesn't quite manage to see it yet but of course now it is so it's just got started that means if a zergling poked up in the front it might be like ooh is that plus one nearly finished or plus one just starting you don't know and until you see the stargate or the robotics facility you can be scratching your head and wondering hey what is going to be trying to kill me because both take very different strategies to deal with the Mothership Core is now on its way out. This is a great thing to add into any air harassment you're doing. Or Actually, I'm going to scrap that statement. A Mothership Core is something you should add into any harassment you're doing as a Protoss player. The reason being is essentially just due to the ability to mass recall is so huge. Not so important with Phoenix, but if you're going for Void Rays or Oracles, it can be important. It also helps you put on some more pressure just on the ground as well. Stops your opponent from overcommitting to anything in terms of anti-air. You can also secure your third a lot easier with the Mothership Core as well due to Photon Overcharge. So between all of that, it's something very important to look at, something very important to get out at really any stage. And I think that you can't really afford to skip it as a Protoss player as in the way the current meta game is. So we're seeing the Hydrogen come down, the Macro Hatch, the Rotoron already there. Double Evolution Chamber should get the 1-1 one, one ranged attack upgrades. Third base is now just really preparing to be secured. We've got the probe coming down there. For the moment though, Phoenix are going to come in and do some nice damage. There is a couple of Spore Callers down at each base. But the Queen, unfortunately, out of position there. Needs to be tucked tied up to that Spore, which means it will go down. That's going to hurt Sen's production. A couple more Overlords are going to be free. More Spore Callers are on their way. Going up to double Spore Callers at each base just to make sure that not too much damage is done. And um, as we can see, Muscular Arguments coming down. Down. That means that Hydras are going to be hitting the field very shortly, and as such, these Phoenix may not have too much of a fun time, but Overlords are still dying. This isn't going to supply block Sen yet, but he's obviously going to need to replace them, and indeed that's something that is always going to hurt a Zerg in terms of their economy, in terms of just their general game progression. And not by a huge amount, but enough to make that worthwhile, and as long as you keep the Phoenix alive, as Kyo's done, you're going to have good times. So, now we see the third base coming down, the double cannon just allowing you to be even more defensive because this is the drawback of going for a Stargate opening. You have very little else out on the field, especially sentries. Your gas is all taken up in whatever it was that you went for in the air, and as such, Big speedling rush b run buys can be very devastating, especially if you do take a greedy third such as that. But now, with Sen getting down those Hydras, the Phoenix will be pushed back. The Void Ray isn't going to have a nice time either. And as such, I don't think this push from Kyo will be able to do too much. It may not even go in. We'll wait to see what he chooses to do. But with the Mothership Coral there as well, he can pull back should it be required. And that mass recall really allows a Protoss player to take engagements that in Wings of Liberty you would never ever go for and that is what we're seeing now. A good force field there which is trying to lay anything coming down. We do see the Void Waves going to town on that hatchery. The Rock's trying to get taken out here as well now but that fourth base is going to go down. We may just see a mass recall straight away and that is indeed what will happen. So to be honest that was a Brilliant, brilliant push. Knocked out a fourth base, took no losses. This entire game, Kyo's only lost 100 resources. That is clearly a very advantageous position to be in as a Protoss. But Sen, he's got a good number of Hydras up. He's also getting Enduring Locusts upgrade out, which means Swarm Host will be on the way rather than the Viper style. This is going to be strong. The concern is, though, that a Hydra Swarm Host is nice, but the downside is going to just be that actually... 
what if the Colossi count gets too high? That's when you can start running into some problems. So we'll wait to see what Sen does, how he actually plays this out. Also getting a few investors as well, but without pathogen glands, I'm sure that hasn't... Nope, it hasn't been brought out. So no pathogen glands, the Hydras are now pushing up. There is only the one single Colossus out on the field, and that means that Senna has a good attack angle and is able to snipe it off. Well, that is going to be big problems for Kyo. A good spread on these units. Some speedlings are on their way through. A Guardian Shield being used by the Sentry just to reduce the damage, but it has now worn out. And as we can see, the Cybercore, the Forge have both gone down one of the gateways. Some nice force fields just trapping a couple of units, but not really enough in my opinion. And with the Cybercore now falling, obviously that puts Kyo back into the Stone Ages. The single Colossus is doing some really effective DPS, but with just streams of speedlings coming in and no gateway units to support it, it will get taken out. And this is a really cool timing push coming in, and Kyo is forced to GG now after losing pretty much everything. So a very simple timing push with Hydras, which was incredibly potent. And just for anyone wondering, Sen did have Groove Spines and Muscular Augments researched with that push. So they were completely upgraded Hydras. So thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you did enjoy. Please like the video, leave a cool comment, and of course subscribe. And I hope to see each and every one of you tomorrow for yet another new cast. Bye for now.